Hello class, I wanted to go over some of the things that we didn't get a chance to finish uh, when we met last time. Um, starting here um, is where we left off, uh, convenient foods and the menu. So convenience foods are foods that have some or all the labor built into them. Um, the things that would otherwise need to be added on site. So for example, a pre-packaged or pre-marinated uh, product or something that's pre-cut, um, those would all include labor and they would already be done for you um, and you wouldn't actually have to do them um, yourself in the restaurant. There are some advantages to having convenience foods. Well, primarily reduce space and equipment needs. If you're not having to accomplish that step, you don't need to allocate for space to do that step. Uh, you also need fewer skilled personnel. Sometimes a convenience food can be something that would otherwise be difficult to make. And you could have somebody else do it and you pay for that, of course. But you don't need to hire your own employees to do it or train them to do so. Convenience foods also give you a chance to increase your menu variety quite a bit. Um, remember we talked about portion control, what an importance it is to have consistent portion control from a cost control perspective. Uh, convenience foods already are pre-portioned, so you have a better chance of controlling that portion control and reducing waste. Your quality could be better if you buy into the theory of specialization that you would be buying something from somebody who would be a specialist at that. You could have better quality. You might not, though. And the cost could be less if you factor in the fact that you don't need skilled personnel or special equipment to accomplish something. Oftentimes, convenience foods do cost more, though. There are some disadvantages of convenience foods. Uh, primarily, you have to rely on external suppliers, and as you know, this can be a problem because once you outsource something, you have to rely on their quality, uh, their timeliness, their reliability, uh, and if they mess up, then it looks poor um, on you. You might have trouble with public acceptance. Uh, not only do people not want things prepackaged. They might want to imagine you slaving away and making it in your own restaurant. Uh, they also might worry about the quality uh, of something that's prepackaged or convenience foods. Sometimes employees could feel some resentment because you are removing an element of their profession from them. You might be paying quite a bit more and the quality may be inconsistent or subpar. When we were talking about menu planning, um, we were talking about how it is so essential. Uh, it's, it is an important part from cost control, but when you, when you create the menu, you need to think about your guests and use an elimination process if it's not working. Uh, you, some of the menu planning tools you can use is looking at old menus. You can get an idea of what's been used in the past from the restaurant and maybe what has or hasn't worked. You can utilize standard recipes. Um, inventory, product availability, and related information is also helpful in planning the, the menu based on what you can get, what time of year you can get it, and what you already have in your inventory. Of course, you need to look at cost data when you look at pricing your menu. Sales history information will let you know if products in the past have been successful or popular, if they've been dogs or stars, and production records. Some of the menu planning principles, you want to think about what guests need and want, what type of food do they want, how much are they willing to pay for it, uh, what type of food fits into your theme, and what's the competition offering? Are you offering the same thing? You know, unless you're quite superior to the competition, you probably want a little bit of variety to make you stand out. Uh, more menu planning principles, you want to make sure you have entrees, appetizers, have some high starch items and vegetables. Um, this would be kind of something that I would expect most of you culinary students to have a pretty good grasp on. Menu design, this is kind of the fun part of menu, I think, is that it's a, you know, as we discussed, a very marketing tool. So you want to look at how the guests are going to perceive this. Uh, guest consideration would be the idea of hypnotizing your guests' eyes. And the book does a pretty good job, and the next few slides are also going to show you some of the ways we hypnotize by drawing the consumer's eye to the products that we want them to see. Uh, if you do consider this, you can um, definitely increase your sales of the highly profitable menu items. 
The menu cover should be a symbol, should include a symbol of the firm's image, some sort of logo, trademark, or photograph. And remember the pretty menus we looked at in class. Uh, they should set the tone for the experience. This is the focal point of a single sheet menu. So the, again, the book has these, but um, you're going to need these a little bit, uh, these ideas for your discussion board coming up. Um, if you have just a single sheet, so this isn't something that's folded or um, there's no front or back, if you're just looking at one front of the menu, our eyes are going to go to that center focal point. You can tell it's right in the center. That's where we naturally look. But if we have a single fold menu, so this would be folded like a book, our eyes tend to go to the upper right hand corner. And think about it, when you get something, where do your eyes go when you get your menu? You start paying attention to where you first look and you go up to the upper right hand corner. And we want to know why this is important because this is where we want to put the things that we're really pushing to sell. This is where we're going to put the highly popular, highly profitable items. This is kind of a fun one. This is a two-fold menu. And this is the order that our eyes look. So we start here at the focal point, and then we go to that same upper right-hand corner, that same pattern we saw in the other two. Then we shoot all the way over here, check the other corner. And I guess our eyes like corners because we come back down here and then back up there in case we forgot something. And then we check down here. So keeping this in mind, the menu items that we don't want to promote too much because maybe they're labor intensive and we don't have a, a lot of profit um, made off of them. They're not losses because we wouldn't have something like that on our menu, but they're maybe not as profitable. profitable. We're going to hide them down here. And think about the things that are down here typically on a menu. You usually see your soft drinks, uh, maybe your children's menu, things that are are not your big items. The things you want to promote are usually up here or up here. Uh, menu changes. Um, some of the reasons why you might change your menu are um, driven by external factors such as marketing aspects, economic conditions. You know, During a recession obviously you're going to change the way you strategize your menu. Uh, the competition is always going to be a uh, factor in how you change your menu. Supply levels, maybe you have great difficulty getting um, a certain type of fish or something. You have to change the menu because of that. It's something out of your control. External factors are things that are out of your control. And then industry trends. Guests today will pay more to receive more. Um, internal factors, these are things that we have control over. Um, a meal pattern, you know, maybe we have a distinctive breakfast, lunch, dinner, meal pattern, and we have different menu layouts or items that are affect a change, change throughout the day. Uh, we have our own concept and theme, operating sin menu systems, and menu mixes. Menu advertising suggestions. Um, menus can be your best advertising tool, and uh, you can find, I'm trying to find my notes here, it's going along just fine. Um, sometimes you can use um, ways to advertise your business. You can have a personal welcome from the manager. Yeah, you can always have chef recommendations. People love that. Um, obviously, if the chef is excited about something, they want to try it. Uh, quality statement and satisfaction guarantee. There are some more menu advertisement suggestions. And some common menu errors. So these are always nice to know. The design and layout of the copy. If you can't read it, uh, if it's just poorly laid out, it's confusing. Sometimes you'll see menus that just have so much information packed on them. It's, it's overwhelming to read and people don't want to read it. Uh, color is a big deal. You have to consider some people are color blind. Some people don't like a lot of color shooting out at them. Some people want a little bit of color and instead you just handed them this black and white, rather dull looking uh, menu. Sometimes there's not enough description in the menu items. Uh, they could be too large or too small. The way that it's segmented on the page could be a problem. Of course, you're going to have great difficulty if items are left off, if things are clipped on, or information is left off. 
Um, the importance of menu pricing, I'm going to take a break on this video and start a second one so they're not too long and I will be with you shortly. So this is the first video. Come back.